Hello and welcome to Reimagining Education, a podcast from Michigan International Prep School. I'm your host, Eric Van Houten, and joining me for the second time on the podcast is Faisal Askar. Thanks for having me. Good to be here. Yeah, I, I told you I'd have you back in your back. So, <laughs> yes, thank you. um, today is quite a special episode. I'm going to kind of throw it over to Faisal in just a second. Um, but it's special because we get to hear his story. Um, and there's a reason why we are listening to his story today. Um, I think it's important for, for everybody. And I hope, you know, I hope that you understand the things that we're saying um, and that you are enriched by it and blessed by it. So, um, Faisal, I'm going to kick it over to you um, and just let you let you tell your story. All right. well, thanks for having me and appreciate you bringing me again. Um, now, I just want to make it clear to the audience that uh, the message for this podcast is to um, uh, make it not political or not religious. We just want to talk about uh, something that happened to me in my life, and it is actually a case study since we are educators, and I'm just an example. I'm not going to talk about myself. Well, I am, but it's not about me. It's mm-hmm. all about a generic um, argument and um, something to talk about and something to bring on the table with, with an evidence and something that happened to me, actually. And this is the case study of me that I actually born and raised in, in Iraq. And um, my life until the 2003 war, the one that I can speak of since then, it's the one that I actually lived. I was in middle school back then. Um, so the war of 2003... Um, since I'm not talking about anything, again, political or religion or anything in that matter. Uh, it's just the life general that we lived in as a, a people, regardless if it, they were in the army or the government, just people in general that mm-hmm. lived during that war um, is, is a, a horror movie. It's mm-hmm. a really a bad um, example to live in a life of um, chaos and wars and bombs and it's really hard to explain it and and the best way to explain it is to bring in the pandemics is really not related but if we bring a pandemics times that by a thousand maybe more than a thousand that's a war in a country and it's very hard for us to realize what's a life in a war especially when you don't know when you get bombs or you don't know when uh, all these nuclear things happening. So it's very important for us. Um, the life that we lived back in Iraq was a chaos. Mm. Um, now, the reason why I'm bringing Iraq in the middle is because the sample of what's going on in, in Ukraine, all these people in Ukraine um, are are going to be living. Uh, they're already having, it's already two weeks in the war and they can't even... It's, it's chaos. They're not living in peace. They're scared. They're stressed. And a lot of them are dying. And, and, and the point of it is really no winner. I mean, mm. it, it's, it's just a lot of losers, a lot of people losing their lives. So you had said to me previously when we, we talked about this that simply you know, war life isn't good life. You know, it's, you said it's a horror movie. Um, and I think that you experienced a lot of things that Ukrainians are experiencing now. So um, what was it like, you know, emotionally or, or in that fear of, of living in the middle of a battleground, essentially? Um, basically is you don't know if you're going to live today or not. Um, you don't know if you leave, leave the home, come back or not. But sometimes you have to leave just to bring food on the table. Mm. It's not something, I mean, even though we were able to put food on in stock and, and we're prepared, but we'll, we don't know how the war will, how long the war will take. So these people, they don't know if they will get killed, get bombed. Um, if, it, if it was a nuclear a bomb or something chemical. I'm pretty sure they are probably wearing masks right now just because they don't know what's going on. So it's it's a very scary um, life. And back home we used to live like with my auntie, we used to live together just because we were scared. And we don't know if we're gonna, might as well we all die together, but it's just like, it just give us the best energy that we can live is to stay close to family. Mm. But um, 
that was very scary and i can't really <laughs> explain it very hard because living in a war is is the worst part of life ever mm. you had you had mentioned already in this podcast too that um you're you're willing to talk about this very difficult thing because you know um ukrainians are going through the same thing right not just worry about people coming in the country but worrying about if they're gonna make it to the next day right and, exactly. and bombs and possibly chemicals and, and shooters and tanks everything rolling through there um and that's something that you you experienced so um we're talking about it because it's happening in ukraine mm -hmm. um so for for most of us we haven't lived in a war um we've mm -hmm. never been invaded here in my lifetime mm -hmm. of yeah. in america so what kind of things um what kind of things should Americans be aware of so that we can be more empathetic or so that we can think about this in the right way? Does that question kind of make sense? It is, but it, um, I can say that um, everything is provided for us. Um, if, if something, let's say the issues right now we have is a chip shortage, but you're talking chip shortage comparing to a war, that's a whole different level. Mm -hmm. I mean, we still live in heaven. That's that's the mm. bottom line. No, no matter what the issues we have right now, even though the gas prices is up, at least we can go and fill the gas with the car mm -hmm. and the time we want. These people, they have to wait days to get gas, if they have gas. I'm not sure. I'm not following that yet. But I'm just talking about my, my past, that if we needed a car gas, we had to wait a day just for us to to have mm -hmm. even though we, the, the gas prices are up but um now now going forward is is going to be a good outcome or a bad outcome we keep getting worse 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 every day so i mean common sense right we don't want to talk about any political or religious uh, outcome or what i'm not i'm not the message is not just tell everybody what to do or what yeah. we need to do. Yeah. It's just common sense. And 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 common sense is really, um, everybody knows the answer to this. So I'm not going to say it that it's not going to be under my name, but everybody knows what should happen right now to, to fix this. Mm -hmm. Because um, God created us to, to live and work hard and produce. We don't, and, and the way we should die is when, the day comes for us to die, not mm -hmm. by killing or um, with the bombs and other things. So, yeah. common sense again. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's 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 pretty transparent. At least I don't think it's a a hot take to say there are attackers and mm -hmm. there are victims, right? The the innocent victims of a of a place, right? That that our prayers are with. Um, that's rough. So I, I liked what you said of. You know, it's making me thankful even right now, right? Mm. Of chip shortage, can't get yeah. a rental car, or right. uh, uh, wages are down, or it's right. expensive to get gas, or, or maybe you know, poverty's worse, unemployment's worse. But um, those are our problems, and we're not wondering every hour if a bomb's going to hit our house. Exactly. Um, so that that there makes us grateful. And um, you mentioned that there is a common sense direction <laughs> mm -hmm. that that war is never a good option correct what's the what is that if you had to distill it in a sentence or what or more you know what's the what's the common sense direction there what should we be hoping for in ukraine okay so i, I can probably relate it to history since history is something yeah. that happened truly in the past and a lot of um now i'm not a history teacher so i can't really talk in details but i haven't seen any um, battles that ended up in a benefit of both ends mm. everybody i mean somebody will die in in each of these um, uh, countries so the bottom line is both of the team will lose so if it's an investment, if it's something to extend land, if it's more power, there is none of that is happening. Mm. And, and back in history, if there is one single battle that happened with advantage, I would like to, to know about this battle. But yeah. yeah, in common sense, the direction is is, is stop killing people and, and make the people live happy. And maybe there's something that can be negotiated. And if it's not, then... Um, 
you gotta be you gotta be something to these people have nothing innocent people uh, whether we're stopping uh, all these technologies in in the russian people now let's see if it's if it's the government decisions why are we relating this to the people mm-hmm. the people of russia innocence people of ukraine innocence they both are being harmed right now yeah because of the decisions that was made so i mean it's it's not supposed to be um a, a decision that could kill people i mean it's not the decision of killing people should be a god decision so let's let mm. me say it that way mm-hmm. maybe it's not about uh, when we talk about death and 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 related things is just common sense is something that has to be come from from god yeah it's hard so, to disagree yeah. with you shouldn't kill people yeah <laughs> so it's even if it's i mean if it was something with criminals or other things and and that's a different different case uh if, if that's a different law but just going in general we are killing innocent people whether mm-hmm. from russia or from from ukraine yeah so from the perspective of, of let's say our mips families and students we're mm-hmm. living in a history where we have seen this type of thing happen before yeah. and seen that it never ends well <laughs> it's yeah. never never worth it for the the common man right the common man it's always um ill i don't want to even say ill-advised it's mm-hmm. it's kind of evil at that point right right um so this is i'm going to put you on the spot here just because i think people appreciate you opening up and knowing that someone here has lived it and we can learn from this um, and better empathize better support um ukrainians but when you look back at your life um once the war started in iraq what is the the first thing what's the main thing that comes to your mind whether it's emotions whether it's things that you did what's what do you remember most about living during that war um i remembered uh how hard was it to go to school it was mm. a very hard uh because it was my everyday thing yeah so going to even though the school was not was only one mile away uh but is it safer to walk or is it safer to take the car mm. is the car will be bomb or somebody will be come because you know there's a lot of bombs and and shooting out the street for no reason but mm. yes it's it's i don't know which one was the safest and i didn't have a cell phone back then so it was <laughs> it was the hard decision mm-hmm. um but in in general is is very basic things that we don't have we cannot sit by the by the glass window because we don't know if it's going to break or not mm. we have to sit on the side uh just simple basic stuff that we don't think about normally but we had to think about it over there and um i just didn't know if if my dad's leaving or coming back home you mm. know this is when he goes to work this is how how scary it was but uh the people wanted to live happy they always wanted to live happy until this date they want to live happy but from 2003 i want to speak until now the people are still they're trying to make it work but it's not it's not working out it's yeah. not working out so the side effect from a war even though it's been two weeks in ukraine and the war in iraq since 2003 what's what's the advantage now what what do we mm-hmm. have are the is it, i mean just trying to rebuild is just very hard mm-hmm. now we're going back to before the war is going to be a very hard time mm-hmm. so it's 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 a bad decision um war in general yeah it's probably for me it's a bad word yeah in general should be <laughs> should be <laughs> yeah yeah it's so we should always value life more than than things and power so um I, I'm going to put you on the spot once more, so mm-hmm. feel free to take your, your time to think about it. Actually, I, I have one more question that I'm going to put you on the spot, but is there anything else before that? Because um, I think that'd be a good place to end. Is there anything else before that that you want to say, tell our families? You know, we're already so grateful, particularly to MIPS families, because we don't yeah. even have to leave the house. Maybe we're still afraid of our neighborhood, but yeah. we're, we're online, right? But is yeah. there anything else that you wanted to, to say to families and anyone listening to this? I just want to say we uh, we go to work, we come back, 
and we have maybe time to spend with the family after work and we can go out if we want uh, maybe that's life is rough maybe uh, working hard is 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 needed to make income but at least we have that option i yeah. mean we can go and then we can save money we can go on vacation we can plan for our life we have we can go to a school and graduate get a job and but some other countries if you though you graduated you, you know have a difficulty finding a job yeah. but i mean simple things that we can do here in a matter of minute it's very hard in other countries yeah yeah simple as ordering things and you know just simple task as far as uh a coverage even though it's still uh some other countries still have problems with cell phones and talking mm. and simple th we have everything we need in here mm -hmm. i mean um, again we're, we live in heaven mm. the, the things we talk about it's we have to be appreciated of the things even though inflation yes things going on in, in this life right now pandemic but we got over it but we still we we made it i mean we should be happy let's yeah. say it that way i like that and that leads into that last question I had for you. Um, as you know, we end every episode of the podcast with a win, yeah. right? And leading into that might be a little bit more difficult, but I was thinking, uh, I'll ask it this way, whether it's from your time in Baghdad mm -hmm. or it's here, and maybe you, you mentioned a lot of good things just now, but maybe we could go a little bit more, more specific. Um, during turmoil, like Baghdad or, or the Ukrainian mm -hmm. war now, um, what's... What's a good thing? What was what's something that you look back at and smile? All right, I I always whether it's with students who are having a bad week, family, friends who are having a bad week, no matter how many things are going bad, um, there's something that we can find and say, hey, that's a blessing in my life. Whether it's for the Ukrainians or you, you know, living with your aunt, you got to you got to be with family, right? right. And not everyone gets to be with family, or maybe you had a car, um, and not everyone does have a car or right. um you know you had you were a mile from work or from school when you were a kid and maybe some you know had to walk two miles or something like that right so we're not playing a comparison game but no matter how hard life is i think we need to take a step back and realize that we do have blessings that other people don't right, right? so that was a long preface but when you mm. look back um what what's a win what's something that makes you smile uh back home Sure. Um, sure. Think about your time. Yeah, your time in Iraq. What's something that you look back at and smile? Because we can definitely call that a win uh, if you can smile at something while living in war. Well, I was able to graduate from middle school mm. with all this uh, happened going on, and and I made it. Yeah. Um, so I guess that was that was a win. Um, we were able to. Um, I was not kidnapped. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that's a win I don't know well, you know, I, it's a bad story but those are the wins that I could uh, consider myself oh I made it even though our neighbors got to be kidnapped and mm. I'm not so I am got lucky yeah um, and you know it's just a blessed that I'm still alive even though a lot of um, whatever happened in, in the shootings uh, industry, I want to call it, yeah. uh, is is something that I got it out of it, me and my family. Yeah. So it's something that we should really um, appreciate and, and live and be happy and, and actually work hard. If we get a chance to work hard and make more money, do it. I mean, when we complain, go to Ukraine. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, man, I it doesn't have to always relate Um to things that we're going through. And this definitely isn't a pitch for our school, mm -hmm. but I think looking at someone who was living in the middle of a war, mm -hmm. wondering if he was going to get kidnapped or killed, mm -hmm. graduated. Yes. Right. And maybe yes. there, maybe there's a student out there who's like, wow. Yeah. I guess I can graduate too. Um, so I love that. If nothing else, motivation to, to, to see your opportunities that we have here. But I love all that. Um, Faisal, I'm not gonna gonna make you you open up more. Um, I think that's really powerful, and you know, if we get questions, we can we can have you back. Uh, we can talk about certain things there. But um, loved having you on. 
Thank uh, you. We got you in the new studio and yep. powerful message. So um, thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Reimagining Education is brought to you by Michigan International Prep School. If you'd like to learn more about us and what we do, head to our website at miprepschool.org. That's miprepschool.org. Thank you so much for listening to this podcast. We will talk to you soon.